We are delighted to welcome you today to our CBS Family Service. If you are watching us on Hope TV or listening on Hope FM, or those of you streaming live on our Sitem Church online social media platforms for the very first time, we extend a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us as we take time to worship and hear from God. We also have a special youth service live on Hope TV and on the Sitem YT Nation social media pages every Saturday from 2 p.m. Our CBS Sunday School happens every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. for ages 10 to 12 years, at 9 a.m. for ages 5 and below, and 9.30 a.m. for children 6 to 9 years. On Tuesdays, please join us on Hope TV, Hope FM, Facebook and YouTube at 5 p.m. for the After Sunday Live discussion where any questions you have about the subject of the sermon today will be addressed. We welcome you to join us on Wednesday for the live midweek prayer service from 6 p.m. broadcast on Hope TV and Hope FM and on all the Sitem Church online social media platforms. We invite you to send in your prayer requests before and even during the service. Our pastors will be praying with you and for you. We want to thank all our Safari groups for continuing to meet faithfully online. We expect Safari group meetings to be virtual, using social media platforms like WhatsApp or meeting by Zoom until further notice. If you are not in a Safari group and you wish to join one, please send us a message on our WhatsApp numbers plus 254-784-277-277 Airtel and plus 254-728-221-221 Safaricom and we will guide you on how to join one in your area. Planning to get married? We urge all our members to contact your senior pastor for direction on the steps to be taken in preparation for your wedding. Our pastors will conduct weddings, keeping strictly with the Ministry of Health guidelines, so please contact your pastor in good time to make arrangements. We express our deepest condolences to all who are bereaved in this season. We wish to inform you that our pastors will be available to conduct funeral services strictly following the current protocols from the Ministry of Health. We will also conduct the burial service on site according to the current Ministry of Health protocols as well. Please contact your respective senior pastor for guidance. All our Sitem Church offices are open between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Monday to Friday, strictly observing all current Ministry of Health protocols. Thank you for staying connected to the Sitem Broadcast Service and thanks for paying attention to these notices. Please remember that all our assemblies around Kenya are now open for in-person services. However, if you wish to attend, you will have to register in advance to book a seat. You can do so by using the USSD code star 304 star 933 hash for Safaricom users and follow the instructions to receive a seat confirmed for the service you chose to attend. If you are not on Safaricom, you can use the church website www.sitam.org to register. Seating capacity is limited to not more than one-third of the capacity of the sanctuary and all other Ministry of Health protocols still apply. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. Welcome to the Sitam family service today, where we always look forward for a special time in worship and in the Word of God. My name is Rehema Chea Wabaraza. I'm serving as your moderator today. Welcome, all of you listening to this service on Hope FM, and those of you watching us on Hope TV and on all our Sitam Church online channels. 
every Sunday at this time. Our hashtag for today is Family Healing. More about that later in the service. As always, let's get started with praise and worship. Please help me to welcome our worship, amazing CBS worship team into the presence of the Lord. Welcome to you. Hallelujah. Are you ready to dance for Jesus? Ha, Jehovah Shira, msaka wangu anatenda mambo maku. Eh, Jehovah Shira, msaka wangu anatenda mambo maku. Jehovah Shira, Jehovah Shira, msaka wangu anatenda mambo. Oh, Jehovah Shira.
Unaweza pigia Yesu makofi popote ulipo.
be worshipped. Wherever you are, just raise your voice to Yahweh. He's to be lifted up on high. He's to be worshipped. He's to be exalted. Sifa zote ni zake. Sifa zote ni zake. Mungu ku. Wajabu. Mwaminifu. Lord, we exalt you today. Lord, we lift your name today. We exalt your mighty name today, oh God. Hallelujah. Come on, just worship the name of Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. This is our sacrifice, Lord. We surrender to you. We surrender to your glory, Lord. brought myself I am the sacrifice I have more than a song today I brought myself I am your worship receive this living sacrifice I am your worship Lord, accept this living sacrifice. I am your worship. I have.
up your voice. Don't stop wherever you are. Let an Abrahikana Mosi, Jehovah Shama, receive this. This is my offering to you, Jehovah. I offer myself as a living sacrifice. Oh, oh, oh. My voice and I will sing. I will sing. I will sing. To my Lord, my Savior, my God and King. I will sing. Shana I will sing. Sing holy, holy, hey, sing holy, holy, oh God, we your sons and daughters, we praise you now, and we cry, holy, we cry.
Bless the Lord, all my soul, and everything that is within me. Bless his holy name. He who heals your diseases and forgives you of all your trespasses. Father, we are here to praise you for what you have done for us, O God. For what you have bestowed on us, O King of glory. We worship you, my master. We worship you, King of kings and Lord of lords. The one who never changed, who is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Father, we surrender to your will. Father, we surrender this morning to your power. We surrender Jehovah, the nation of Kenya, into your able hands, O oh God. That you is able to heal and to make amends, O oh God. Come and reign in our nation, O oh God. Father, we surrender the body of Christ into your able hands, O oh God. That, Father, you'll come and bring revival to the church. Father, come and bring healing to the nation and the church of this nation, O oh God. Father, we surrender, God. To you we bow down. We ask that, Father, as we say we are vessel, as we say we are sacrifice, O oh God. Today, Jehovah, may you exalt yourself in the family set up, O oh God. Father, may you touch families today, O oh God. May you bring unity in the family, King of glory. May there be obedience in the family between the children and the parents of Father. Lord, remind us on how we can train and bring our children into the ways that Father are pleasing to you. And Lord, we pray that may there be restoration in the family. Where there have been brokenness, O oh God, Lord, may you bring healing. Where there have been separation, Jehovah, Lord, reconcile your people again. Father, we surrender to your power. And as we sing holy, we praise you. Father, this is our prayer. That today families are going to raise and praise your name. Today the church is going to raise and praise your name, O oh God. Today the nation of Kenya and to the entire world who are watching us, O oh God, they are going to raise and to praise your holy name. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. As the choir continues. Holy, holy, you holy, holy. We love you, Jesus. Holy, we bow before you. Holy, we surrender to you, Lord. Holy, our bodies, our souls, our spirits, we give to you. still be. What a great time in worshiping God this morning. Many thanks and many thanks to our well-anointed worship team. Thank you so much. Thank you. If this is your first time with us on CBS, we'd like to say welcome and karibu sana. Feel at the feet of Jesus. We especially want to welcome our friends joining us the broadcast in Namibia, in America, USA, in Romania, and in East Timor. We mention this country especially because we have sit-down assemblies in those countries. But of course, if you are with us or if you have joined us or maybe you are looking and watching us or listening to us, we still say welcome and feel at home. In case you have not subscribed to our YouTube channels, this is the time and this is the moment. Please go ahead, subscribe to our YouTube channels, click that bell icon for notification and the reminders of the future video. And wait us, share today worship experience with someone else today. Invite your friends, your family who are near or far to be blessed today. And remember, to use the hashtag for today as you tweet, hashtag family healing. Once again, our hashtag for the day is family healing. Why not engage with us by posting on the tweet or Instagram? Let us know your thoughts and comment as you worship with us today. In our midst, we are delighted to welcome our speaker, for today, 
Reverend Elias Maura Gitaka. In a little while, he'll be bringing a message about can a family be healed? You don't want to miss it out. We want to, off to offer our offerings and our tithe. And before that, I will pray on how I will pray and then the clip will run to guide you on how you can pay your offering and tithe. Everlasting Father, we come before your presence. You who is the giver of life and of all good gifts. Father, the Bible says that everything belongs to you. And so, Father, there is nothing that we can give or pay for what you've done for us. This is just a token of appreciation. We want to thank you that you have enabled us, oh God, to work with our hands and produce the wealth. We want to bring this offering that your children have brought into your house today. That, Lord, you'll bless it. That you'll cause the deacon board who sit and decide on how these funds to be used, that your Holy Spirit will guide them. We want to pray for an overflowing blessing that your children will encounter as they go on their marketplace. We want especially to pray, those who have not even been able to give today, that Father, you'll make a way for them. Open a door for them, because their hearts desire to give and to worship you in this special way. So Lord, we commit your people as they engage throughout the week, that they will encounter your blessing and overflowing of your blessing upon, and upon them and upon them. For it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. It is now time to express our worship to God through giving. Thank you for your continued support of God's work even in these trying times. As we seek to bring the spread of the virus under control, we believe that God who sees in secret will reward you openly and abundantly. For the easy management of our finances, we have established a common payment platform for all our giving, irrespective of which assembly you attend and even for our visitors. You can now give via mobile money through the platforms of M-Pesa or Airtel Money. The pay bill number for either system is 933-934. I repeat, 933-934. For the account name, please indicate the SITAM assembly you attend and if you have joined us in this service but you are not a member of SITAM, just write offering in the account space. Please remember that all the other SITAM people numbers remain operational. If you would like to make a direct bank deposit, electronic transfers or PESA link, please use the following account. The account name, Christ is the Answer Ministries, the bank, Cooperative Bank, a University Way branch. Account number is 011-280-617-639-00. I repeat, 011-280-617-639-00. The SWIFT code, KC-O-O-K-E-N-A. That is KC-O-O-K-E-N-A. If you prefer to give through our website, kindly visit www.sitem.org. Click on the Give tab and follow the instruction for online giving. Once again, we want to appreciate every one of you for every gift, every tithe, every offering and every generous material support. God bless you. Thank you for, gener for your generous giving towards the tithe and offering. Thank you for your support even at this particular time. Right now, I would like to invite our guest for a special song. And our guest is Emma Omonge. Welcome. Oh, 
so tight I knew it, knew it way through. Hajaya moyo angu, Yesu tu. Hajaya moyo angu, Yesu tu. Kama ya la. Tafuta vyo maji Zaidi ya udango mkavu Wana vyo kiu kwa tone la maji Ilivyo nafsi ya Nisipo usema nwe Ulivyo moyo wa Nizame kwa pendo la mbu Nataka nizame Nizame
for that special song, and I pray that it has ministered to you viewers and to those who are listening to us, and it's our desire for all of us to dwell in the presence of the Lord. Now is the time to share the word of God. And the speaker for today is no, is no other than a Reverend Elias Maura Kiduka. He is the director for administration here at CETA. He's married to Jacinta, Caroline, and together they are blessed with two daughters. Karibu, Mchungaji. Thank you very much, Rehema. Well appreciated. Yeah, good moderation. Thank, Thank you, you so Pastor. much. Thank I you. I believe that viewers have so many questions. And remember, as we continue with the hashtag family healing, today we are going to be answered and also to be reconciled. Karibu. Amen. Thank you, Rehema. Well, well appreciated. Welcome to all of you who have tuned in to us today. And uh, we pray that God will speak and communicate his word to us. Let me invite us for a short word of prayer as we begin, uh, the, uh, as we begin the sharing of the word. Our Heavenly Father, it has pleased you to bring us together in this way and to break the bread of life together. Jehovah God, the words of my mouth, may they bring glory to you and healing that is needed at such a time as this. We bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray and everybody say amen. Amen. Today is a great pleasure for me to bring to us the word of God. And it is in a question form. Can a family be healed? Can a family be healed? We turn our focus today to family healing. The pressures of life have pushed many, many families between the rock and a hard place. Strained family relationships is a common occurrence in our day, ranging from financial constraints, violence at home, loss of livelihood for various reasons. And it includes the current pandemic that we have and so on and so forth. The list can be long. But this results to despair and hopelessness and this is evidenced by cases of homicide that is on the rise. In fact, when checking through uh, what we have as a statistic, I realized that in 2015, 2016, we had only about 100 plus cases of homicide. In 2020, it had risen to more than 400, almost hitting 500. It shows that there is something going on with our families requiring the healing of the Lord. Some feel that their family situation is beyond repair or redemption. And the question we are asking ourselves is, can a family be healed after deep hearts and heartaches within the said family? You know, you and I know that it used to be very rare to find a parent, 
a mother or a father locking themselves in a house, killing all the children, and finally killing themselves. Those were things that were unheard of. Such parents perhaps went to a place where they felt trapped by life, by things that are so on us, including pandemic and all the rest, and unable to do anything to save themselves from whatever situation they find themselves in. I want to link this to a story well known, the story of Joseph. And I'm reading for us from Genesis chapter 45, verse 1 to 15. I'm reading for us Genesis chapter 45, verse 1 to 15. If you can just go right there with me so that I can read for us. Genesis 45, verse 1 to 15. The Bible says this, Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him. He cried, Make everyone go out from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he went uh, and he wept aloud so that the Egyptians had it and the household of Pharaoh had it. Verse three, and Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, come near me, please. And they came near and he said, I am your brother, Joseph whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here for God sent me before you to preserve life. Verse six, for the famine has, has been in the land these two years and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and rule over all the land of Egypt. Verse 9, hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son, Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen. And you shall be near me, you and your children, and your children's children, and, our, and your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. Verse 11, there I will provide for you. For there are yet five years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have do not come to poverty. And now your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see, that it is my mouth that speaks to you. Verse 13, you must tell my father of all my honor in Egypt and of all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept upon his neck. Verse 15, finally. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. After that, his brothers talked with him. Some little background here suffices that we have something I have called the tyranny of favoritism. And this we found in the house of Jacob. It is a situation where Jacob had two wives. He loved Rachel more than Leah, the other wife. And the same was extended to his own sons. Hatred and jealousy divided Jacob's family. We have Leah's sons on the one side. And we have Rachel's one son, that is Joseph, uh, Joseph then, on the other. This was a terrible situation. And many times, dear listeners, we find ourselves in such situations in our families. The tyranny of favoritism, dividing the family right down the center, adding salt to injury. The most favored, and that was Joseph, Joseph Rachel's son, was a dreamer who could not keep them or keep those dreams to himself. The dreams tended to favor him than the rest. And he did not care enough to know how to relay those dreams to his brothers. And because of that, the brothers hated him with a passion because he shared those dreams and those dreams tended to give him the upper hand over his own brothers. And therefore, when an opportunity provided itself, the brothers colluded among themselves to take his life. 
But God was gracious that they ended up just selling him out to people or traders that were going for business in Egypt and they ended up selling him there. To the brothers, to kill Joseph or to, to sell him was actually good riddance in their view. By the way, they had no idea how this was going to turn out to be. Now, the four areas of focus in our service today or in our sharing today is number one, a look at Joseph's forgiveness. Number two, freedom upon forgiveness. Number three, Joseph's discernment. And finally, number four, I will look or help us look at God's sovereignty. God's sovereignty. Those are the four areas that we will be focusing on in our sermon. And I pray that the Lord will bless you. Let me begin with the first one. Joseph's forgiveness. Can a family be healed? That's the question. Number one thing, Joseph's forgiveness. Joseph had an excellent opportunity to revenge again his own brothers. Because when they came the first time because of the famine that had hit the land, he did recognize them. But they did not recognize him on their own part. They were clueless that actually this person or this senior official in Egypt that was talking to them was their own brother, Joseph. They were clueless. Let me tell us something and pause there to give us a note that when our relationship with God is poor, our discernment is at zero. There is no uh, reference whatsoever to the contrary that Joseph's brothers had even a hint that the one they saw as a tough e e Egyptian official could be their brother, the very brother they colluded to kill, the very brother they ended up selling to the Ishmaelites. Consider with me the disciples on the road to Emmaus Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to, 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 to 35. You know, they had discernment because along the way after they realized who it was that was talking to them, they talked to one another saying, didn't we feel our hearts getting pricked as he shared with us the scriptures? That's an indicator of a people that had sensitivity. They were having discernment. But Joseph's brothers, Perhaps because of the things that they had done. Perhaps because of their jealous. Perhaps their inability to walk with God did not have discernment. Though they were clueless that this person was actually their own, own brother. What a disaster it is when we have no relationship with God because we cannot discern things, more so the things of God. But anyhow, Joseph being kind oh, and uh, trying to find out, are these the same brothers who sold me to the Ishmaelites? Are these the brothers who had conspired to kill me? Is there any change in their lives? And therefore he took them through some tests, hoping to determine if they were changed, whether there was any transformation from their hatefulness, their jealous filledness, if there is such a word in English. Or had they changed through time? Interestingly, it seems like the issue of their brother kept haunting their conscience, threatening to catch up with them for every time something unexpected or unusual happened, they quickly would think that this was God's judgment because of what they had done. And therefore, I perceive that perhaps this selling of their brother Joseph and causing a lot of pain to their own father resulted in them having no rest and no peace for many years. The arrest of Benjamin for stealing the silver cup, which was a setup actually by Joseph and the officials in Egypt, must have collapsed their world which had been built on hatred, lies, and deception. It was actually their true character until this time. But what happens is rather interesting because Judah is the one who reveals their restlessness. The restlessness that was as a result of what they had done to their own brothers as recorded in Genesis chapter 44 and verse 16. 
Because the words he uses there, he says, God has found out the guilt of your servants. What is he referring to? That action many years ago, where they had conspired to kill their own brother. But as God would have it, instead of killing him, they sold him. Judah is actually the one who proposed that they either do away with him or they sell him. In fact, he says, what is the use of calling, killing him? Let's sell him to these traders, traders that were, were passing by. And therefore they sell him. So kindly note, it is Judah who proposes that. And it's the same one who is used now here to indicate to us that they had a restlessness of a kind because of what they had done to Joseph many years ago. So Judah, of all the brothers, is the one who rises up to the occasion, actually, to plead Benjamin's release, Genesis 44, verse 30 to 34. This was a proof of a transformed man, for Judah was hard-hearted. Judah was a hard heart. He is the one who proposed, of course, the sale of his brother. As though that was not enough. In fact, the chapter that uh, divides the story of Joseph from where he is sold and where he goes to Potiphar's house, it is chapter 38. And chapter 38 is rather an interesting one because it caps us Judah and the heart of Judah exposed even the more. Because here comes Judah. He goes into a certain town. He was going to attend to his ship. But there he finds a prostitute, not knowing that Tamar was actually his own daughter-in-law. Goes into her, or as the Bible would say, knew her sexually. Interesting enough, as fate would have it, she, con she conceived. After conception, a story went round and got to Judah that, hey, behold, your, your daughter-in-law is pregnant. And what does Judah say in anger? He says, no, bring her out. And what does he say? His verdict, burn her. Let her be burned. So when you hear this, you see Judah's heart and character. And now to see him coming now here to plead for his brother on account of his father's pain, this is a transformed Judah. And this actually became the very reason why Joseph considered the account of the brothers and felt they had changed. And hence his forgiveness. Because Judah was ready to sacrifice himself for his brother Benjamin and also his aged father. He could not stand to see his father in pain again. Remember when they sold Joseph and they went back home and they lied to their father. There is no record whatsoever that there was anything in Judah's heart like remorse, like whatever. But here there is remorse. And he does not want to see the same pain repeated in this kind of situation. It is an indicator of a changed man. This touched Joseph deeply. What is noteworthy is that he did not take his brothers on a guilty trip like some of us would do. You know the way we rub it in to make sure that they feel that what they did was painful to us. So we, we drive it in with a lot of force. He did not do that as an indicator to what he had gone through. Rather, he invites them close to him. This is a thing that an Egyptian would never do to a Hebrew then. Because remember, Joseph is dressed like an Egyptian. In every way, he looks like an Egyptian. Maybe this is what was the confusion among the brothers. An Egyptian would never call upon a Hebrew to come close. Hebrews were shepherds. And mainly Egyptians were farmers along River Nile and all that. And therefore, they did not interact very closely with the Hebrews. And therefore for him to say, come close to me, is an indicator to something. Furthermore, he spoke in their Hebrew tongue, having excluded everybody else so that he could truly reveal himself. Now he did something else as an indicator that I have forgiven you and I have accepted you as family. He hugged each one of them, weeping on their shoulders. This was a true indicator that he had forgiven them. Joseph's action was actually a great relief to the brothers. A heavy weight that had rested on their hearts for many years. This takes us 
to the second point. For our families to heal, forgiveness is not an option, but the thing to do in the fullness of time. And we go to the second point, which is freedom upon forgiveness. Joseph has forgiven his brothers. He has called them close to himself. He has hugged each one of them. The passage of scripture indicates that when Joseph revealed himself, the brothers were dismayed. They were afraid. They were apprehensive. They were so ashamed of what they had done and were not sure how to behave. Neither were they too sure where Joseph was going with this issue. But when he hugged them, weeping on each of their shoulders as an indication of acceptance, all of them were relieved. It is only then that they got the freedom to speak with their brother freely. Please kindly take note. Freedom comes as a result of forgiveness in this kind of situation. And therefore, when the brothers were forgiven and they truly saw that they had been forgiven, they became free to talk to their brothers. Forgiveness brought about freedom. Whereas we are not given the content of their sharing, we can only assume that they took time to catch up with one another or with each other. Truly, forgiveness brings about freedom. Upon forgiveness, our families will have an opportunity to enjoy loving relationships with each other because I know that there are families who do not see eye to eye. When one son is visiting the parents, the other one cannot because they dare not meet at home because of unforgiveness due to certain things that could have happened among them. Joseph forgave his brothers and once forgiveness was expressed, the brothers were free to have a loving relationship all over again. Number three, Joseph's discernment. Whereas Joseph did not trivialize or make small what they had done, he made sure to pronounce himself clear on the matter. But in the process quickly did something worth noting. And it is important for us to take note of this. He directed the brothers to God. I repeat that again. He directed the brothers to God saying, it is not you, kindly note, it is not you that brought me to Egypt, but God sent me here with a grand purpose. And what was the grand purpose? To save the whole family of Israel or Judah. Joseph was indeed an instrument in God's hands. He extended love to his undeserving brothers. Kindly note, undeserving brothers while directing them to the one and only God. Very, very important. This reflects Genesis 22 verse 18, where God promised that through Abraham, all nations of the world would be blessed. Through Joseph, nations were blessed with food to sustain them through the famine that had hit the land, including Israel's, that is the sons of Jacob and their offspring. Joseph, in this sense, was a type of our Lord Jesus Christ through whom all the nations of the world would be blessed with the grace of salvation. Kindly take note, dear listener here, that it takes a godly, a godly member of a hurting family to discern the will of God even in the bad or evil that may have been done becoming a worthy vessel for God to use. Let me say that again clearly to you, dear listener, that it takes you a godly member of a hurting family to discern the will of God, even in the bad, evil that may have been done against you or against any member of the family. And hence that godly person becomes the worthy vessel that God chooses to use for the healing of the family. Discernment is critical if we are going to heal where we discern the will of God. But finally, God's sovereignty. God's sovereignty. I pray that you keenly listen to this because this is where the rubber meets the road. Evil done on those that love God and accord according to his purpose could turn out to be for the good of the victim. Evil may have been meant, but God turns it around and something good comes out of it. Joseph's brother did not mean well for him. In fact, it looked like good riddance of the dreamer when they sold him, but God had better plans, which interestingly included the evildoers and their offspring. 
a paradox indeed. In God's scheme of things, he allowed an evil whose outcome would save them and their offspring. This is beyond human comprehension. Why? Because our tendency is to revenge. Our tendency is to take vengeance. Even when we as believers read often, vengeance is the Lord's, but we still want to take revenge against those who have uh, caused us harm. Let's pause here for a moment. I would like you to pause and consider the number of people God is greatly using, yet they have come from broken homes. They have come as orphans without parents, some of them even without any guardian, some of them coming from abject poverty, painful as it may be, and the list goes on. God uses those situations to mold them. In them, you also find great fathers and mothers, whereas they never had an example, an example of how to be a father, an example of how to be a mother. When they get God as their father, he molds them through pain and situations to the extent that they become useful vessels in the Lord's hands. And therefore, whereas they don't have those examples of a father and a mother, they end up becoming the very best of fathers, the very best of mothers. Why? Because God, when he comes into a situation, he changes that situation so completely in his sovereignty. He changes the situation. Kindly note, and I beg you this day, never ever judge the outcome of what a child will end up becoming by the lowliness of where they come from, by the brokenness from which they have come from, by a family broken through divorce and all that. Never ever judge what they will end up becoming. God with them they actually live to tell a story. And that story is actually a testimony of what God can do through a broken vessel, molds it and uses it to his glory. Very, very important. This is an aspect of turning man's wickedness to his glory. God manipulated or orchestrated events where the whole family would finally benefit to appreciate God's plans over his chosen cannot be thwarted. Let me repeat that again, dear listener, to you. We need to appreciate the fact that God's plans for you who loves him can never be thwarted. When he has chosen you as his vessel, it doesn't matter the mountains that you need to climb. All those mountains are surmountable because of God with you. It indeed amazes to see or to witness God in the midst of a mess, making the very best of it. I'd like you to imagine with me the mess that uh, the sons of Jacob find themselves in. They have conspired to kill a brother. Traders have passed by, they have sold him. They are left. This is a mess. And they go lie to their father that your son was killed by an animal. A mess. But then in the midst of that mess, you witness and you see the finger of God turning things around to make what looked like a very bad thing to the very best, including to the evildoers, those who had attempted to do harm to Joseph. God is absolutely sovereign. He reigns reign upon all, by the way, the godly and the, un and the ungodly. So if you have a neighbor that is ungodly and you wish that it doesn't rain on them, it will rain. On them. When the Lord sends the rain, he does not choose the godly. He does not choose the ungodly. He rains rain upon all of them. It is very important for us to take note of that, that God is absolutely sovereign and he does what pleases him to his own glory. He accomplishes his purposes, even where we could not see any purpose at the beginning. Instead, we only see pain. But at the end of the story, God turns everything around. I read something that I would like to quote for us from a certain Reverend Dr. DeForest Soris. And he says this, and I quote, An obstacle in life could be an opportunity, while every burden a potential blessing. Let me repeat that again because it makes a lot of sense to me. An obstacle in life could be an opportunity, 
who are every burden a potential blessing, end of quote. But I have added something there, when God is in it. And that is exactly what Dr. DeForest meant, that when God is in a situation, hey, an obstacle in life becomes an opportunity. A burden that you're carrying becomes a potential blessing. And therefore, if people have not treated you well, including your own family, in fact, you're where you are because maybe your family refused you, rejected you. As long as God is with you, stay well assured that he's up to something. Remain faithful. Remain godly. He will turn everything around, including the evil meant for you, for the better. And you become actually salvation, quote unquote, not only for yourself, but also for your family. God being sovereign has capacity to overrule human deeds to achieve his purposes. He has that capacity. Let's believe on him. For our families to heal, dear brethren, we must submit to the sovereignty of God. Allow God to be God. And may our ways be tied or aligned to his will. And we will see the glory of the Lord in the fullness of time. What have we been saying, brethren? We began with a question. Can a family be healed? From the foregoing story of Joseph and his brothers, I say conclusively, yes, it is possible. Joseph, the point of contact through whom God worked, represents all those like you that love God and are called according to his purpose. Maybe you didn't hear that clearly. Let me repeat again to you. Joseph became the point of contact. And God can use you as a point of contact for your family. So Joseph here is a point of contact for his family whom God worked through. And like I have said, Joseph represents all of us that find ourselves in situations that are unexplainable. And only God can come through and heal. For those called by God and they love God and are called according to his purpose. You are the point of contact for your family and whatever situation that you may be in to bring healing in that situation. There is hope. I repeat, there is hope if we commit to the following. One, forgiveness, which is a must. It is key. We cannot do without forgiveness. And there are those we have found, that one I will never forgive. You cannot have good fellowship with God with unforgiveness in your heart. The first step, forgive. So that you can become that point of contact for God to bring in freedom. That is number two. To bring in freedom as a result of forgiveness. And where as brethren you can again lovingly relate like Joseph and his brothers did. Forgiveness is one. But then number two, forgiveness brings in freedom to again lovingly relate. Number three, having discerned God's will in the mess, having discernment because you're a child of God. When you're a child of God, you cannot help. You will have discernment. Having discernment to discern God's will in a messy situation. And finally, submit to God's sovereignty. You who love God in a family, he can use you as a point of contact to bring a much, the much needed healing to the glory of the one and only God. And I want to leave you with a question here, a question that God himself asked Sarah when it looked impossible for Sarah to get a child and God came to Sarah and asked Sarah after she had laughed when she heard what God was planning for him and Abraham. As a result of the promise he made, you read from Genesis 12, you go to 15, you go all the way and you find God promising that Abraham, it is not through anyone else that the world will be blessed. It will be through your son, your own son. Son born between you and Sarah, not any other. 
And he asked this question to Sarah. Is there anything too difficult for me? And I ask us the same question today. Is there anything impossible for God? Is there anything impossible for God? I can only pray. The Lord, may you heal troubled families. Kindly bow that head so that we can pray together. You're there. You have never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe that's the beginning point for you. Where God would like to come into your heart so that you become the point of contact for God and your family. And at the end of it all, bring healing to your family. Bow that head and it's only a prayer away. And say, Lord Jesus, I come to you seeking your forgiveness because I am a sinner. Disengage me from my past. A past I lived without you. From today, help me to live for you. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Forgive me and cleanse me from all my wrongs. Help me to forever live for you from today henceforth in Jesus' name. And now, Heavenly Father, it has pleased you for us to go through, through the scriptures and share this word. Father, the question we're dealing with was, can a man, can a family be healed? And Lord, we have concluded that it is possible because of what you have given us in scripture. I therefore pray for every family according to your will. In the fullness of time, bring healing upon every family that was under my voice. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said, Amen. Thank you, Reverend Elias. Thank you, Rehema. Indeed, a family can be healed. Amen. And I'm speaking from experience. Amen. I am a living testimony. Amen. Thank you. Bless you, Rehema. Viewers, listeners, you've heard. There is hope for every family. You just need to be that contact person. What a blessing that we have had in the presence of God. We want to continue to ask you viewers to share this link with some of your family members. Share it wide. Let them hear this message if they have missed it. Let's bring liberations and restoration in the families. We continue tweeting and putting our hashtag, hashtag family healing. Thank you. Please don't, don't forget to join us next week on Tuesday, where Reverend Elias will take us on a live conversation and answering all those questions that you have, whether a family can be healed. Kindly post those questions early enough. Join him at exactly 5 p.m. And whether you, are, you have just given your life to Christ and you are wondering how you can grow in your spiritual journey, find a church next to your place or don't fail to join us every Wednesday for a midweek prayer session where our pastors will be there ready to pray for you and taking up all your questions. You can reach us on the following number that is 0728 221 I repeat the number again, and it is on your screen, 0728-221-221. We'll be sure to follow up with you, and thank you for tuning in today. Let's keep the hope alive, and let's keep on tweeting with this hashtag, Family Healing. From this junction, I would like to invite Reverend Richard uh, Lepesa for a word of benediction. Until next time, see you then. Amen. Thank you, Chair Baraza. Thank you, Reverend Elias, for that great word. Thank you, worship team, and every minister of God that has been able to, to minister today. May the Lord bless you. Mine is just to bring 
the service to a close, even as we commit it to the Lord. Amen and amen. May the Lord truly bless you, even during this time when uh, we go out there and apply the word of the Lord as it permeates our hearts. May the, our Father, our God, and our Savior, we just come before you and we praise your name. We worship you and exalt your holy name, O oh God. Thank you for the ministry of your word through your servant, Reverend Elias, O oh God, even as uh, uh, he has ministered to our hearts, Almighty Father, and impacted families, O oh King of glory. Lord, we pray even as he has ministered, Almighty Father, as you bring order in families, O oh King of glory, and sort, us, sort the messes in our families, O oh God. We pray that through the power of your spirit, O oh King of glory, that your will and your purposes shall be fulfilled in our hearts and in our lives and in the lives of our families and our loved ones in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for each and every one of our audiences out there. And we commit them to your hands, O God, and we pray that it shall be well with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, may you continue moving in a mighty way, saving and delivering us, O God, from every hold of the enemy, liberating us and setting us free, O God, that the joy of your spirit shall be full in our lives, O God, that we shall live to sing of your goodness in the land of the living. Father, we lift you up and we honor you. We bless your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, may you remember Sitam, remember Hope Media, remember every minister that has ministered today, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And may you release us with your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord richly bless you and be with you all the days of your lives. Amen.